Hi guys, I'm Eileen. Today, I want to share with you some of the Hermes buying tips. So I have three Hermes handbags, including a Birkin 25, a Kelly 28 Vuitton, and a Kelly 25 Salier. I bought all my handbags from the same store and from the same sale associate. I've received quite a lot of questions regarding buying a Kelly or a Birkin from the Hermes store. So I've compiled all these questions into this video. Hopefully that will give you some answers. Also, this is based on my personal experience. Every Hermes store works a bit different. So do take this with a pinch of salt. Question one, do you have a Birkin, Kelly or Constance? I think this is one of the most commonly asked questions in any Hermes stores. Personally, I've come to realize that all the sale associates will have no option but to say no to you. Otherwise, it will cause a bit of chaos, especially if the store was busy. This is why in certain Hermes stores, they will show you the bag in the private room or the fitting room. The store I go to is quite small, so it doesn't have a private room. So usually, if my assay offers me a bag, she will let me know the exact specifications, just so I can do my research before going in. In fact, with all my bags, I had pretty much made up my mind before hitting the store, so it didn't take me a long time to try them out because that in itself can attract a bit of attention from interested customers. Now I work in the service industry myself, so I can imagine the frustration of being asked the same questions many times a day, every single day. I'm not defending the SA by any means because it is part of their job, so I'm sure they are expecting it as well, but I'm just trying to put things in perspective. So for example, there were times I was at the store and about five customers would ask the same questions in the space of 15 minutes. Sometimes the essays would suggest for the customers to visit the store more often in case a shipment came in. Personally, I don't think you'll get a bad offer just by showing up every day. I think it's just a nicer way to say no to you. Now I can understand if you're already in the store, you might as well ask the question. There's really no harm in asking, but just prepare yourself that the answer quite often will not be very exciting. Question two, is there a waiting list? I've been told there's no waiting list anymore. In the past, they used to have one. So sometimes you could actually get a bag after waiting for a few years. I think Mel from Mel Sodera got her beautiful Birkin that way. If you ask in the store now though, they often don't have a waiting list anymore, probably because the demand is getting a bit high. I feel like even if you do have a purchase history, your essay might still struggle to give you your exact dream bag. There are suggestions that you should be slightly flexible with your requests because even the essays cannot control what shipment is coming in. So in short, as a business, it's rather pointless for them to have a waiting list because it's not very common that's a Birkin in the store and no one wants it. So I don't think they will get around to calling their list before the bag is taken. Question three, do you need a purchase history? And the answer is yes, because even Hermes has a sale target to hit. So they do favor their buying customers when it comes to their popular pieces. Of course, you can argue that you're still a buying customer even if you're only interested in their handbags because the bag is not free after all. To this, I can only say it's all about supply and demand and it's true that they are using their popular handbags as a leverage to increase their sales as a company. Personally, I really love the Hermes Rose Gold, so I guess that works in my favor, but certainly not to my wallet. Anyway, I also love many other things from Hermes. I think their quality is amazing. So if I'm looking for something to complete my wardrobe, I will look at Hermes as an option. For example, my wardrobe was missing a pair of sandals. So I decided to go for the orange sandals, but I'm not interested to have a collection in different colors. So essentially, a purchase history is a must if you want to get a back offer but I will always recommend to only get things that you actually love because that way, even if you didn't get a back offer, you've not lost out on anything. Question four, how much do you need to spend? To be honest, I've not asked my SA directly, 
but I've heard in some countries the essays are quite upfront about this and quite often it's like a one-to-one -one ratio which means it has to match the price of the bag you're after. My instinct is, at least for your first bag, that's quite often the case, but after you've built up a relationship with your essay, it shouldn't be as rigid anymore. For example, I was asked a question after I got my Hermes CDC bracelet, and I asked for the Kelly 28, but then last year I was offered the Kelly 25 with no purchase history for the whole year. So my feeling is, at least for my store, it doesn't work on a year-by-year -year basis. I also want to say that uh, I got all my bags around the last quarter of the year, uh, especially around Christmas time. I've heard that uh, they usually have more shipment in around that time of the year. So if you are saving up for a treat, just keep that in mind. Question 5. How to choose your essay? Now, I don't think you should only approach managers just because they have more authority. That said, I know essays do have to run by their managers before they can offer you a bag. So I guess it's really up to you, but I think having someone you can click with is more important. Also, always buy everything from the same essay. So for instance, even if something you want is available online, you should still email your essay and get it from her. In fact, I've stopped going to all the other Hermes stores because I know if there's something I want, my essay would be more than happy to help. And talking about my essay, she is quite young and fairly new to Hermes, but she's lovely and always willing to help, so I feel very comfortable doing my shopping with her. And I can honestly say I like her as a person. She knows my family well and we always speak about hers. So just like me and you, they will appreciate to be treated well, so just be yourself and be genuine because it goes both ways. Question 6. Can I turn down a bad offer? And the answer is yes. In fact, my essay often says to me, if it doesn't feel perfect, don't get it, it's a lot of money. So I never feel the pressure to buy anything I'm not 100% sure about. Along the same line, you should never feel obligated to buy a bag in a color you hate even if it's a Birkin. I'm sure your essay will want you to have a bag you're happy with as well, so just help her out by being very clear about what you want and the compromises you will consider. For example, you might want a Birkin 25 in any grey colours, but you will only consider silver hardware. So basically, you need to know what you want yourself, otherwise your essay will struggle to give you the right bag. However, I think the option to say no is only available if you have a purchase history because if you really hit the jackpot and got offered a bag with no previous spending, I believe it will be a take it or leave it situation. Question 7. What to do if your essay is leaving? Now there's always a possibility your essay might leave their job and usually they will let you know and someone else will take over and look after you. I really don't think they will want to lose a customer, so I wouldn't worry too much. But I agree, you don't always find someone you can get along with. My essay is actually leaving by the end of the year. I feel really sad to see her go, but I wish her all the best. So hopefully I will come across someone who is as friendly again. But what will be will be, so I will keep being myself and we'll see what happens. Last but not least, what about Paris? I've heard a lot of people manage to get a bag from Paris. First of all, they should have more stocks at the flagship store. Secondly, they deal with a lot more tourist customers on a daily basis, so you should have a higher chance of scoring a bag without a purchase history. Also, it works out a lot cheaper if you can claim the VAT back, so I don't think there's any harm in trying, especially if you are in Paris anyway, but just make sure to go with a low expectation. I will not suggest going back and forth to try your luck though, because you're on holiday, so you should enjoy yourself and not be stressed out because of a bag. If I ever visit Paris again, I think I'll give it a try, mainly for the experience. So those are some of the Hermes buying tips. I know not everyone is a fan of this system, but I think many fashion houses are now doing the same for their popular pieces. So unfortunately, it is what it is. 
If this whole business model doesn't sit well with you, you can always try resellers or the pre-left market. After all, buying a bag should be a treat, not a stressful encounter. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share. I will see you in my next one. Bye.